Hey everyone, what's in the news? Well, the health agency NICE have said that to consider yourself healthy, your waist should be less than half your height, although they failed to follow up with a suitable explanation as to how I'm supposed to increase my height by 14 inches. And the Prime Minister just visited Ukraine, but of course most of the headlines this last week have been about Rishi Sunak's wife, who got caught out this week for being very wealthy and not paying any UK taxes on any of it. She's so wealthy, in fact, that she can afford to leave the heating turned up, but she's also from India and therefore claims to not be domiciled in the UK in order to pay the lower rate of Indian tax on her earnings. The thing is that she does live in the UK, in Downing Street at number 11, and she's married to the Chancellor of the Exchequer, you know, just in case you missed any of those minor details, you know, they're somewhat important in determining whether she should be paying taxes or not. You know, Bernard Levin once wrote that anybody who paid more tax than the law requires is foolish, and I largely agree. What Akshata Murthy did was legal, and the same as what every self-employed person does, but ultimately it's all about public perception. You know, like politicians cheat on their spouses with depressing regularity, but it was a special kind of umbrage that people took to Matt Hancock having a grope with his colleague all while telling everyone else that they were banned from leaving the house, even to hold the hands of a dying relative. Of course, by the end of the week, the story reached what may have perhaps been the end of its run with the announcement that she will indeed be paying taxes in the UK, although she will almost certainly be structuring her finances in a way that doesn't eliminate so much as minimise it below the likes of what most members of the public would pay. This has also seemed to distract from the story that Rishi Sunak himself had a US green card in his wallet. Perhaps it would be more of an uproar were Labour and the BBC not up to their eyeballs and similar shenanigans themselves. You know, we've all read the stories about Gary Lineker's battle with HMRC who claimed that he owes them nearly five million quid and the opposition benches constantly yield fresh stories about how even arch-communists like Tony Benn structured their wills so that none of it went to the tax man. Perhaps then the lesson is if we've learned anything from the likes of Tony Benn or other Labour MPs or Lewis Hamilton or Jimmy Carr, it's even if this story does sink Rishi Sunak's hope of eventually becoming Prime Minister, he's at least got a good career ahead of him when it comes to BBC television appearances and Chris Christmas DVD sales. Anyway, see you next week. Like these, like subscribe.